Well, thank you, Annie, so much for your presentation earlier. Very interesting, and I think the audience loved it. Could you tell us a little bit, from your perspective, what do you think the industry or business role is in terms of digital media literacy? I think industry has an important role to play. I think we can do a lot in terms of helping the users and the customers that we have for our services um, to present to them opportunities to understand and learn about the digital uh, media that, that they're using or that perhaps their children are using who often are often more advanced than perhaps parents and perhaps have wanted and desiring it and demanding it or um, you know things get moved around passed down amongst family members and among friendship groups so it's important that we're able to have a, a face to that to those people to understand what is going on and for us to like if it was a, a, a car manual almost you know or for the washing machine in the same way we need to be explaining um, how not just how they're working but you know how they what, what 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 might be the potential risks and what might be the potential benefits of this and keeping a balanced approach is pretty important as well um, you know because they, often these services are transformative to society, to life, to people that use them and uh, hmm. we need to have some sort of engagement and commentary on them with customers. Okay. And what is Vodafone doing specifically? Well, we've, we've had a leadership role in particularly in providing tools for parents, so we often have access controls on our mobile, on the network, that means that children are protected from might be illegal, harmful content, uh, particularly parts of Europe where there's much more uh, liberal approaches to content. We've needed to have um, real technical tools to protect children. Uh, we've taken some big initiatives in having a parents booklet that we've certainly had across Europe uh, made available so that there is an actual guide for parents. And There's the recent website that we've launched which is vodafone.com forward slash parents and I think that's probably one of the most comprehensive sites available across the world really at the moment because it's not just about mobile, it's about fixed, it's about mm. gaming, it's about everything that your child could be using because if you know about one thing such as a PC and how to control and manage that, you also need to know how to manage their gaming device which also might have online capability. Um, so there's a lot for parents to, for you, you know, children and young people themselves to understand and learn. Um, so we're very much trying to help people with the right information, with the right tools, and a trusted place to go. Great. You had mentioned in your remarks um, that you thought there should be educators in the room. Yeah. Who are the other key players, educators, that you think need to be involved in this debate and who you're interacting with? I spend a lot of time with educators at the moment, I think teacher training in particular, so it's not just that who, who are those teaching our children, but it's who's teaching the teachers and mm. training the teachers. So I think training and educators of children and universities need to be involved. I think it's very important to understand how children and young people are using the technologies and what benefits and, and what difficulties they're experiencing. And I, but I think that's a very challenging task and one that perhaps involves some research, perhaps involves some very careful way of documenting their experience because I think it's only through that that we can truly know in a more honest way what, what they're, they're up to if they're willing to tell us and sometimes they're not willing to tell us and uh, I think uh, you know we, we can't always know what the risks are but we have to begin that dialogue as ourselves as policy makers. I think we're trying to encourage parents and others to you know uh, talk to children and teach them and guide them but I think we also need to be able to uh, do that ourselves with the very young people that we are charged with responsibility for. Great. You also mentioned when you were talking about communicating with parents, communicating with students, how the FAIR concept is often used when talking about things like cyber safety. What's your view on that and how you should be communicating with these people about some of the issues? I think the thing, I've, obviously I've been doing this for some time so I've learnt lessons along the way and I, I think one of the most important things for parents, and I think it came up in the audience today, was actually they already have the skills, uh, they may not have the technical knowledge and they're probably never going to have all the technical knowledge that's needed, neither am I, neither are you, neither is anybody, but what they are good at is they know their children, they parent their children in other ways and in some senses it's building their confidence to apply the skills and knowledge that they've got, that they need to be setting boundaries, they need to be saying no, you can't use the computer or you've played too long on that game and I'm sorry but 
that's that you can't have that anymore. Um, I think that you know it's bu building that in rather than feeling. At the moment, there's a sense of disempowerment for parents who feel, as I said, that they want to give their children the opportunities for education and often are pleased if, and sometimes parents are pleased, particularly in perhaps more Western countries where there are bigger threats outside, that it's better to have their children inside being occupied on a computer <laughs> than running wild or worried about what risks they might be outside of the family home. But, uh, you know, um, both are perhaps a risk and both need management. So. I can see the dilemma for parents, but they, they do need to set some boundaries and rules like anything else, and that they don't need to be the experts. Um, they, they may feel their children know more than they do, and that is a problem for parents, because they don't. it's very uncomfortable for a parent to think their children know something more about a subject than they do. But uh, So I think it's rebalancing that and empowering parents and you know, to have the confidence and the, that they've already got the skills and they just need to engage in it, really. And I think that's the tipping point because they are, they can be very, there is a lot of fear, fear of not knowing enough, fear of their children knowing too much, fear of their children not having enough access to the technology. Um, so there's a lot of different fears at different levels that I think in reaching parents that we need to be thinking about. Great. Um, as you move, as Vodafone has come into Qatar recently, and I know that you're going to be sitting down and talking with some of your counterparts there, what sort of lessons or messages will you be sharing with them for consideration in, in this market? I think being a leader, I think I probably don't need to tell them to be a leader. I think Vodafone is a leader and I think the people that are working in Vodafone Qatar are already of that ilk and they understand that and uh, I think that we'll be talking about corporate responsibility and what shape that might look like, what could they offer this community in Qatar, you know, the parents and from my work that I do, you know, I would be talking about the Parents' Guide and uh, the initiatives around education that we've done in a collaborative way, because I think partnership is very important, having a conversation with the regulators, with other companies, with the NGO communities, to see if there's any common um, issue they could come together around, or just even begin that dialogue is important, really, because I think that's the thing we've all learned back in the Western world and Europe and in the States, that. We, all, we do have to come together and we have to learn from each other and we have to work together to deliver solutions. Um, and I think it's important not to be a, a solution looking for a problem. <laughs> 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 you know, and, and I think that can be a hard job sometimes because we all want to do the right thing, but we really have to work hard to find out what the real need is. And I guess, you know, I can't bring anything and say this is what you must do. I think it, you must go find out what the, the real issues are here in Qatar. Great. Thanks so much. I appreciate Thank it. Thank you.